All right, welcome everybody to C++ Trivia Night. Get your pencils ready. Actually, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go onto Discord and I'm gonna ask you a question. You have 10 seconds to answer it. Don't Google it, just answer it, okay? You ready? Everybody post ready onto Discord. And I don't want you hitting in, you know, enter and entering the answer because then other people will see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to 10. And then when I say go, you hit enter. And then everyone's uh, answers appear at the screen at the same time. And this is for extra credit. You need to get seven out of the 12 questions correct, which is not too bad. It's like an F or better or a D or better. And I will boost your grade on any assignment by 10 points. So quite a lot of points on the table here. No points if you can't even get a D though. So we're just gonna ask some little, you know, simple trivia questions in C++. And here we go. Question number one. Question number, are you ready? You ready? Got to warm up your brain a little bit, huh? You ready? <clears throat> First is going to be pretty easy. What animal is the mascot for C++? 10 seconds. What kind of animal is the mascot? Don't type it in chat. No, you, you type it, and then when I count down to 10, you hit enter. Okay? On your marks, get... Don't type it, Otal. Don't. Don't. You have to, you have to wait. And then... Okay, everybody now hit enter. What's the answer and cut off all right that, anything after the cutoff doesn't count the answer is keith the diseased rat this is the official mascot of c plus plus it is a rat that has shot its own foot off using the power of c plus plus because c plus plus gives you the power of shooting your own foot off with your code so there you go uh we got uh shook got it and all right one point for shook zero points for everyone else all right Second question. I'll just throw some code up on the screen here. Uh, tell me what these three vectors are going to be initialized to. So if I have a vector event named vec1, and I got a vector events named vec2, and a vector events named vec3, uh, type, but uh, you can hit shift enter to uh, hit return without uh, entering it onto Discord. I will give you guys 15 seconds. Uh, tell me what VEC1, VEC2, and VEC3 will be initialized to. Maybe I'll pause the recording. All right, everybody hit enter. Two, four, six. It all makes sense, doesn't it? So, uh, <laughs> nope, uh, yep. So nobody got that one right. It's all right, it's all right. Next one's gonna be easier. Question three, here we go, here we go. So if you've got a class, you got a class and uh, like you, you're inside the class named um, inside the class named X, inside the class named X, and you see a member function that looks like that. What is the name of this member function? Ten seconds. It's all stuff that you should know from like third, fourth week of this semester. Okay, so you look at you look at the class, you see this, you should immediately know what uh, what the name of this thing is. Okay. All right, 10 seconds. Get it typed in, get it queued up in your Discord entry thing. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, and hit enter. Lambda function. It looks like Rodriguez Cruz got it correct. And nobody else. This is a destructor. This is a destructor in C++. Uh, you know how you can see like X and Y, and that's the same thing as X and Y. Uh, if you say complement of X, that is the same thing as tilde X. So this is tilde X. This is the destructor. And these are alternate ways of doing semicolons. So there you go. So we got one point on the board for Rodriguez Cruz and zero points for almost everybody else. All right. Let's, let's keep doing this. Let's keep doing this. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Um, okay. Okay, what does this function do here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give us a little bit of time to read this. What is this function here doing? 
10 seconds. Type it up, type it up, type it up. All right, hit enter. What does it do? Greet someone. <laughs> Nothing. Says hi to the name of RV. Else, yeah, Portnoff got it correct. Uh, does not seg fault. Um, if RV is one, it prints and on. If um, if you run the program like uh, eight out out hi, it'll say hello hi. If you just say eight out out, it'll say hello and on. So uh, this is all alternate operators that you can find on uh, any cppreference.com you want to see. So this is the alternate operators in C++. I'll put a link of that on to chat for you all. Uh, Holman, what did Holman write? It's just low. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll give you the points for that, Holman. It's just low, pen something user input before we're gonna go. Sure, yeah, okay. Vesterberg making a greeting based on the number of arguments passed me. Sure, I'll, I'll give that one to you too. All right, all right, all right. So, okay, let's do this. And let's make this a little bigger. Do, 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 Enter a 10. Uh, okay. I hate auto capitalize plus plus. Um, initialize the array to zero. Uh, what is this code doing? Or if it doesn't compile, uh, write don't compile on to chat 10 seconds on the board what is this code doing type it up in discord don't hit return until i say return yeah, 10 seconds explain to me what this code here is doing give me 20 seconds 20. and hit hit enter There's an error in my code on line three. There is no error in my code on line three. This is perfectly valid C++. Okay. So uh, this is the exact same thing as writing array square bracket i equals i. So it is setting each element of the array to i, which will be zero to zero to nine. Uh, Laura close, but zero to nine instead of one to 10. Hesterberg got it correct. Yeah, it's perfectly valid C++. Um, and the reason why it's perfectly valid C++ is because uh, square brackets uh, is just addition. So it, this is the same thing as saying a i plus r. And it doesn't matter which is the same thing as r plus i. Uh, it is a uh, pointer arithmetic. So whenever you have a pointer to something, array is a pointer, and you add one to it, it points to the next thing in the array. And so uh, array plus zero is array, and array plus one is the next element in the array, and array plus two is the next element in the array. And it actually doesn't matter which order you do it. It does matter if this was like a vector, because vector overloads the square bracket operator. But for C-style arrays, uh, which are just pointers, you can actually add the uh, base plus offset in either direction. It's perfectly valid C++, and it will give you job security. So there you go. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, it, it all makes sense. It all makes sense, I think, right? It's not a 2D array. It's just a 1D array. Perfectly valid C++. Um, what question number are we on? I don't even know. Uh, let's keep going. Um, do this make the font a little bit bigger change settings we got I got I got more for you guys I got more for you guys all right let's do this uh, 36 point font there we go there we go let's make this big yeah all right don't pay any attention to the directory name vim main.cc here we go all right here we go all right so uh, these are just all multiple choice really easy questions just a or b or uh, D is always an option for does not compile. A warning is not an error. Uh, a warning will compile. Um, in fact, this code here will warn, but it is not D, it is not a compiler error, okay? But for all these answers, you can always put down D will not compile. So here we got X is equal to one, unsigned int X equals one, uh, Y is equal to, and Y is equal to negative one. Very simple, A, B, uh, or D, if you don't believe me that 
It will compile. It, it will. Um, what is bigger, one or negative one? Okay. So super zoomed in, credit coming from our grades. It's all right. It's, it's extra credit. It's extra credit. We're just having fun here. Just a bunch of people in the moment, no cell phones in sight, just having fun. So uh, on the count of three, I want you to enter A or B. I'm going to tell you this one's not D, at least. This one's not D. All right, what is bigger, one or negative one? One or negative one. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hit it. What do you got? What do you got? Who's bigger? Who's bigger? Uh, D. I told you it's not D. It's a warning. This is a signed unsigned comparison warning. Anytime you do a for loop where you say for anti equals zero i is less than vector dot size, it'll warn for exactly this reason. So uh, the answer is uh, one is less than negative one, of course. We all know this, right? One is less than negative one. So um, why? Why is one less than negative one? And this was actually given at a talk at CPPCon, and uh, I got it wrong too. So if you got it wrong, don't worry about it. But uh, basically um, what happens is if you compare a signed and an unsigned integer, the signed integer becomes an unsigned number. And so negative one, becomes an unsigned number, it underflows up to max int, uh, max unsigned int, which is 4.2 billion and change. 4.2 billion and change is bigger than one. So uh, negative one is in fact bigger than one. Okay, moving on. Uh, it is B, yes, it is B. Keep track of your points, don't edit your old results. Any, any edited results that are edited, uh, I'm not gonna accept if uh, any of you happen to get lucky enough to get seven right. Okay, moving on. So character capital A is equal to lowercase a. Uh, the variable named lowercase b is equal to uppercase b in ASCII. This is just a simple test of your ASCII knowledge. All of you did histogramming last week. Hopefully, all of you did histogramming last week. This should be an easy pickup for you. So what is bigger? Is capital A bigger than a lowercase b, or is lowercase b bigger than capital A, or are they the same? I, I'll, I'll take C the same as, as a possible option, and even though I don't see how that could be the case, or D does not compile. All of these have D does not compile as an option. Ready? Type it, type it in, A or B or C or D. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Hit it. What do you got? What do you got for me? A's, some A's, some B's. As it turns out, lowercase a is in fact greater than uppercase B. Uh, uppercase a is 64, lowercase a is 96. So the uh, lowercase letters are actually larger than the uppercase letters. Okay. And uh, I hope you all appreciate the uh, devilishness of the variable names where uh, this is the uppercase A and that's the lowercase A and vice versa. It's like that who wants to be a millionaire thing where option A is C and option B is A and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, here we got, uh, yeah, we don't, we'll skip that one. No reason to give you guys a free point. All right, so here we go. Um, uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, this is C side 40 actually. This is a, this is actually like a, a very fair, it's not a trick question. None of these are really trick questions, maybe a little bit. Um, maybe the last one of the variable names is a little bit of a trick, but these aren't trick questions. So this is a C side 40, first semester computer science. What's bigger, I or F? So int I is equal to 5.0 over two. Float F is equal to five divided by two. What's bigger, I or F? Or, or are they equal? Or D does not compile. D is always an option. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Take a moment, take a moment, take a moment. What's bigger, I or F? All right, on the count of three, I want you to enter A, B, C, or D, and then hit return. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, go. Uh, no, the compiles just fine. Um, you might see something in here is, is being flagged by uh, COC, but uh, it does compile just fine. And the answer is B. They are actually exactly the same. Uh, because 5.0 divided by 2 is 2.5. 2.5 stuffed into an integer turns into 2. 2.5 two stuffed into an integer becomes 2. 5 divided by 2 is integer division. 5 divided, five's in it. 2's in it. You do integer division. 5 divided by 2 is 2. 2 stuffed into a float is 2. 2 is equal to 2. They are equal to each other. Moving on. Boom. Let's do this. All right. Pointer math. All right, here we go. Uh, so uh, what was x up above? Um, where is x? Where is x? Where is x? Uh, here we go. We got x, we got y, x is an unsigned integer, y is a signed integer. Okay, so coming down here, do some pointer math. So we got a pointer to x, uh, and then we advance the pointer one spot in memory. And if the pointer is uh, above one, uh, we say, uh, if you remember, uh, that's, uh, uh, we had x was equal to one, and then after it in memory was y equal to negative one. So if the thing pointed to is has a value greater than one, the answer is A. If the value pointed to is equal to one, the answer is B. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, less than one is C or D does not compile. Position to do a Seaside Kahoot. I could, I could. This is more fun for me though. So, A, B, C, or D does not compile. Three seconds on the board. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Hit it. And the answer is A. The uh, It is greater than one. Why? Because it's pointing to uh, negative one. Negative one is greater than one. Obviously. We should all know this by now. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> why? Because uh, it's pointing to Y now. Uh, this is maybe undefined behavior, but it, on our system at least it works. So it's pointing to Y. If you do reference it, uh, it's Y, and Y is negative one. But it's an unsigned integer. So again, it's gonna underflow up to 4.2 billion and change, and that is greater than one. Okay, moving on. Hexadecimal to integer. So we all know what this is. We have integer foo, which is a 32-bit number on this system. And we have 32 ones. Foo is equal to 1111111, 32 times. Bar is equal to 24 zeros and then eight ones. Hexadecimal is just a simple way of representing binary numbers without having to type as much. And so, uh, simple question, who's bigger? Is foo bigger uh, than bar? Is bar equal to foo or is foo less than bar? Or D does not compile. It stays an unsigned integer pointer, that's correct. So what it's pointing at is treated as an unsigned integer. So here we've got foo and bar, and they're either greater than, less than, equal to, or does not compile. Choose your choice now, A, B, C, or D. On your marks, get set, hit it. And Romero got it right, Rodriguez Cruz got it right. All right, cool. Uh, B is, oh, no, 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 sorry, I take it back. Uh, nope, uh, foo is less than bar. So the answer is C. So what do we got here? Meggia, Mora, Lara, and Montoya. Uh, got it correct. Well done, well done, well done. Yes, this is negative one. Okay. So this is a signed uh, number. In CSI 45, you'll learn why this is negative one. But this is a positive number, this is a negative number. If the high bit is set in binary uh, that it, with a signed number, it will be a negative number. Uh, if the high bit is not set, it will be uh, zero if it's all zeros or a positive number otherwise. So foo is negative one, in fact, and this is some positive number. It's, I don't know, can't do it off the top of my head. Okay, next up. Hesperg's at five points. Coming on, coming on strong. Only a few questions left, though. All right, so here we got uh, a, a very simple thing here. Uh, four class, no name for the class, uh, public, colon, int, qr, Semicolon, colon, this is inside of a for loop, mind you, right? It's inside of a for loop. So uh, we're putting a class inside of a for loop, so we're defining a class here with no name. Maybe if that works, D is always an option. Int Q and R, Bob equals one, two. Bob.Q is less than 10. Bob.Q plus plus. Every time this loop runs, if it runs, we double the value of R. And so, uh, as a uh, simple, we, we don't need to do multiple choice, just uh, work out the math. What value is bob.r gonna be if this loop runs? If it runs, D is always an option. It does not compile. Okay, so sit there, use your computer science compiler skills and figure out, you don't have to do A, B, or C, or D, any of that stuff. Uh, it won't fit on the screen, so uh, we'll, just, we'll just do this. Tell me the value of bob.r or say does not compile. I'll give you uh, 15 seconds to think this one through. All right, enter your results now. A lot of people saying it does not compile. You are wrong. This code actually does compile. You can define a brand new class definition inside of a for loop and make a variable of that type without having a type name. This is a anonymous class, no name for the class, but there's a variable of that type named Bob. Bob's got Q and Bob's got an R. Bob's Q is gonna be initialized to one. Bob's R is gonna be initialized to two. And so this is gonna run nine times because we're starting at one and going up to nine. So it's gonna run uh, nine times, not 10. And uh, so we're gonna compute two to the 10th power, essentially. So the answer is 1024, which Mora got, Otal got, and uh, nobody else. Okay, cool. 
Next up, next up, next up, next up, next up. Let's do this. Do, 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 do. So we got here a little array. Uh, int array 10 equals uh, that. So that's going to zero fill the array. We're going to call iota. And then uh, we're going to test your knowledge of uh, standard library routines, of course. Don't Google it. And uh, you hate this game. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's This is what we do at CppCon sometimes. It's trivia night. And uh, if you feel bad, consider there's an entire room full of C++ professors and the, the world's experts on C++. And we were all getting these things wrong. So don't worry about it. Okay, so here we got a standard library function, int array 10 equals open close brackets, iota, begin array, end array, zero. Um, note this is a C style array, not a vector. So you have to ask yourself, does begin and end work on a C style array? Try, if uh, 4r is greater than four, say 4r is greater than four, else if 4r equals four, 4r equals four, else c 4r is less than four. And uh, if it throws an exception, d and uh, also uh, take e as does not compile. You're better off letting an RNG select your answer. Nah, you can't. You can't overthink these things. You have to just go with your gut instinct and be wrong. Okay, so a, b, c, or d. Type in your answers now. Pretty simple code. We're making a C style array. We're calling iota on it. Uh, we're just you know accessing an array element in the usual fashion that we do. And uh, type in your answers now. I guess. Uh, so what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? B, D, B, B, C, D, C, B. Nobody's going for A. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, uh, the answer is uh, B, in fact. Uh, so that is fine. Uh, this is perfectly valid C++ code right there. And, uh, yep, so that's the fourth element. For the first element, array zero, is set to zero. Array one, is set to one. Uh, I, uh, you can use, in fact, begin and end with a C style array as long as you are in the same scope that the array was declared. If you ever pass it to a function, the array will decay down to a pointer and you lose the ability to work with it. So there's something in C++ now called a span that is a pointer plus a size together. And so anytime you pass something to a function, you shouldn't probably nowadays take a raw pointer for an array, you should take a span. And then when you pass an array to it, it'll just kind of magically work. You get this, the base and the size together and you can do things like this with a span. So, cool. You're doing poorly? We all do poorly. It's great. It's fine. It's fun. It's fun. It's all part of the fun. All right. Uh, all right. Simple, 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 simple. This is CSI 40. Should all be able to get this. Integer Bob equals five. And if integer X equals zero, remember X was defined up above. It was set equal to uh, negative one or one? One. Okay. Um, so if int X equals zero, int bob equals 5, c out a, x is equal to x, else if int y equals 5, print out y equals 5, presumably, else c, x is not equal to x, and y is not equal to y, or d does not compile. Okay? So, make it stop, bit field's cooking your brain. No, no, no. There's only, there's only like one or two left. It's fine. You guys are fine. It's good. It's good for you. It's like vitamins and broccoli and stuff. Okay, so yeah, remember x was a, was defined up above. What was x? Let's let's go back up there and take a look at x. X was an in, unsigned integer. X was an unsigned integer. Okay, so there we go. All right, we're back. So we got uh, an integer named Bob. We got an integer x. All right, everyone, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. A B C or D and hit it. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? A B C C B C C A A does not compile cannot uh, assign a value inside of an if statement. You would be wrong about that, Hesterberg. You absolutely can both declare a variable and assign it inside of an if statement. And uh, that is A-OK -okay in C++. Uh, assignment is a expression. It's not a statement. Uh, it can be, a, I mean, you can use it like a statement here, but this actually returns a value. It returns the value zero. What is zero, true or false? Isn't it a redeclaration? Not in the same scope. This is something called variable shadowing. So if you have a variable in a different scope, you can redefine a variable with the same name in a smaller scope, in an inner scope like this. And so we got a variable here named Bob, and we got a, here, a variable named Bob, and these are two different two different Bobs. If I set the value of this Bob to be like, I don't know, 12 or something, um, if I used Bob inside of here, it would be 12. If I used it outside of here, it would be five. Two different Bobs, same name, different scopes, it's A-OK. -okay. You can only have a redefinition error if they are in the same scope, like that, okay? 
So, uh, do, 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 do. so what is zero? True or false? True or false? False. So we move on to the else branch. Integer y equals five. It returns five. Every time you do an assignment, it returns the value. Why? Because you can do x is equal to y equal to z is equal to 10. So what happens is the z equals 10 happens first, and it returns the value of 10. Cool. Now y is equal to 10. Cool. That returns 10. x is equal to 10. So that's what allows you to chain assignment operations like that together. Every time you do an assignment, it will return the value that was assigned. And so this is going to create a variable named y and return five. Is five true or false? Is five true or false? It's true. So it's gonna print out y is equal to five. Okay. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, a little thing here uh, called the comma operator. And uh, we're setting x equal to five, y is equal to five. If x is equal to five, comma y is double equal to uh, x double equal to y, comma false. Then print out a x equals y x equals y false is true. Otherwise, print out x equals y x double equals y false is false. So uh, this is uh, the comma operator. I'm sure you're all familiar with the comma operator. You use it all the time. The comma operator is a core part of C plus plus. Core part of C plus plus. Very important. Very important stuff indeed. So uh, we're just going to test to see if you guys uh, have you know C sci forty level. Understanding of the comma operator comes up all the time. All right, very simple. A, B, or D does not compile on your marks. Uh, they're not 50-50. There's also D does not compile. Uh, so A, B, or D on your marks. Get set and hit it. The answer is B. Why? Uh, this uh, this takes place first. A, a comma is like a semicolon. So this is going to set X equal to Y. So if x was 5 and y was, I don't know, 10, this is going to set x equal to 10. Then it's going to compare x and y. And it'll be 10 equals 10, um, which is true. And then we have false. And so when you have a comma operator, you can put multiple expressions together, or, or even things that aren't expressions. And the whole expression, an expression is anything that goes within parentheses, right? this whole expression will evaluate to whatever the last thing is in the comma list. And so this is going to be false, because I put a false there. So uh, the answer is B. Uh, this allows you to do things like call a function. You can call a void function, in fact, that doesn't return a value. And you can call that function inside of a if statement and then do a comma true or comma x double equals y or something like that. So you can have a void function inside of an if statement. Maybe why would you do that? I don't know, but you could do it. So you can do something and have a, maybe it sets a global or something. So you can do it and then see if the result was set or something like that. Like an error number is a common use of that. So in C, there's a global called error no. So you do something like this. If foo, error no, see how error occurred. So you do something like that. So foo is a void function that doesn't return anything, but you can still put it inside of the if statement. And if an error occurs in it, uh, it sets a global called error no to uh, a non-zero number. And so if it's a non-zero number, an error occurred, and then you can print out error and then, you know, maybe die or you know, something like that. Okay. Um, and if an error didn't occur, then it just moves on. It's like calling foo. So it's kind of like, a, I don't know, exception handling or something like that. Just when you thought C++ is starting to get easier, uh, this replaces double ampersand? No, 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 not at all. This could be false, this could be false, this could be true. It will evaluate to whatever the last thing is in the comma list. So a comma is like a semicolon, but you can put them inside of expressions, okay? And the whole comma list evaluates to whatever the last thing in the list is. Now, normally you don't do it with three, you normally do it with two. Um, like I said, you'd call a function and check to see if error no is set or something like that. Uh, like here, doing a three is pointless. That's why it's throwing a warning because this doesn't do anything. It's returning true or false. And then we're just saying that the if statement's false. Okay. All right, here we go. Bonus round. Uh, I don't think I need to explain this. So I will just uh, give you guys um, uh, 10, 15 seconds. I'll, I'll pause the recording. I'll let you take a look at this. All right, and we're back. Um, A, B, C, or D does not compile. On your marks, get set, and hit it. Let's see what we got here. 
Unlucky Stover. Yeah, uh, clearly this is bigger than this, right? It's wider. And so the answer is B. Okay, so that is that for today. Hope you guys had fun with uh, a little bit of trivia night. Um, yeah, it's just based on the size, right? Like this is smaller, right? This is one, this is three. So it's not true. This one's five, this one's three. So this one's bigger. Okay, so there you go. Uh, don't worry, nobody got any extra credit in the previous class as well. So uh, I will stop this recording and put that up as a separate C++ trivia stream. And then we'll move on with uh, threads and mutexes and the regular class. Bloop.